Welcome to Nico Cosmica. This is a Moontide Magic Moment. I am going to today highlight another book from my library. This is The Power Through Witchcraft by Louise Hubner. This is just one of a number of books that Louise Hubner wrote. And she also put out an LP. I have the CD version, it's called Seduction Through Witchcraft. These are just two examples in my personal library I find her work fun. She was kind of the original glow up or glam witch. And there's a section in this book in particular, The Power Through Witchcraft, which talks about creating or concocting a whole new you. This was during the time when you could go to Kmart as a housewife and Kmart used to sell these little books. They'd be up near the cash registers and they'd be you know, learn language in five minutes or uh, they had Star Wars varieties, and some of them were about witchcraft, like literally witchcraft was being taught to housewives through Kmart and local book clubs. They would get together and do this. And so one of these people who was talking about the early glam up of the housewife and not living a dull life was Louise Hubner. She was the official witch of Los Angeles. So that is the moment today. My little side note is I'm seeing on YouTube a lot of talk about people being having photos of others on their altars and yes that can be very powerful having somebody's photo in fact it can be also be very powerful in a good way if you want to have your father's protection have a picture of your father on your table near you or on your altar if you are afraid of people coming into your home you can use pictures of guard animals People use those um, for the food dogs are used in that way as to be guardians and protectors. People sometimes will point figurines of animals towards their doors and windows as protection. That is a form of spellcraft. It's a form of warding and it's absolutely powerful. But what people forget about in magic is that it's a two way street. Okay. So they may take a personal effect. There's people who, when they go to the dentist, will want to get their teeth if they're pulled. There are people who go to the hair salon. And if your hair is cut or in a brush, there, if you're a witch, you often will either go to another witch to have your hair cut, not have your hair cut, or will ask for what's called the remnants. And those are, and there's other words for them too, but those remnants of your hair being done, your nails being done, can technically be used against you. They're personal effects, but it opens a two-way street. And that is the thing that is never, almost never spoken about, either on YouTube, YouTube or in magical circles, is that if my face is on your altar, yes, you can do magic against me, but you have opened up a channel to where I can now do magic against you. And this is where we get into the notion of witch wars. Because just like having my picture there allows a practitioner to focus on me and to, to almost meditatively focus at work, I can equally meditatively, without seeing the practitioner, use my photo, which is sitting on their altar, or my hair, which is sitting on their altar, or my fingernails sitting on their altar, redirect that work and attack them back. And it is perfectly ethical to do so because they are attacking me. So if I am a practitioner, if I am an adept, I am not putting someone's picture on my altar because that opens a portal for that per or a channel or what other people may call the current. The current is not one way. This is not Oh, ye practitioner are so powerful and can only direct your magic at everyone else. Nah, bruh, get prepared because this is a circle. Not only will your own energy and intentions come right back to your ass, but then I am now able to come at you. So there's always a buyer beware, right? And this is it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed. Keep on shining.